Hey everyone. Okay, so we are here for the session of DB Technology Composer Software today. And Composer Software is like any other software, any other brand that they have a SPL mapping software. So Composer is the DB Technology version of the SPL mapping software for the designing and the prediction software that is dedicatedly for all the db technology products here primarily i'll be showing i am not very concerned about the products here but we'll be generally taking uh, the dvat 12 clusters over here and uh, the cabinets with the s30 and uh, subwoofers and i just want to show you the basic layout and how easy this particular software is at times we always face the problem uh, where the software becomes very complicated and then ultimately people give up they do not try anymore to dig into the software and as a result what happens is like they go on the field hook up the system and it's all on the fly there is no planning the pinpoint the rigging configurations the pinpoint uh, settings and all these things they just assume it and whatever they are doing in the left they obviously do with the right but when the whole thing comes on the platform of assumption it doesn't work like that so it's not going to be that accurate so as a brand's software they have a dedicated philosophy behind developing that software and how they want their customers and their clients to work on that particular software so here we the 6.5.1 version of the db technology composer software this software is dedicatedly for SPL mapping and giving you all the pin configurations of the linear source and also it gives you three and four uh, options of the subwoofers which best suits your venue so here we can see like any windows we have the normal options of the new open save save as save screen you can also print a PDF file if you need uh, so that you want to you can give the instructions to your boys to get the work done then there is the metrical uh, system where you choose you want to work in fit or you want to work in meter you want to work in Fahrenheit you want to work in centigrade whatever suits your taste and however you want to work with that Today we are working with the Imperial form where we are working with fit over here and then language and the contrast and all the basic tools that you have. So the first opening page is the composer where we design the system how many cabinets we are deploying, the truss height and uh, dimension of the stage, dimension of the whole venue. Next is the linear resource prediction where it will show you the side view of the how the line array is actually working in that particular scenario which particular kind of array configuration you want to go with spiral j spiral or j if the people are standing or seated wherever you move the cursor it will show you the spl over here and also the x and the y axis here here we have the option to choose the frequency that particular frequency we want to look into how it's working in that particular venue <coughs> if there are any current kind of extra floor any kind of what is the floor size any kind of extra balcony how many balconies so we have an option to go up to three balconies over here set their angles and everything the length height and everything also gives us a overall SPL graph from the start to the end 
and we always aim to keep it within the 6 dB range front to back. Then we have the subwoofer prediction where we have left right center, left right center, the line if everything is stacked in a one single line of subwoofer, cardioid and end fire. And then we have a couple of things over here. This is the configuration check. If everything is okay, then mechan mechanical safety, if everything is okay again. And the delays. So this delay particularly, depending on the design you have made, it predicts and tells you, just to give you a platform to work on, like where you are going to put your delay on the line arrays. If the line arrays is, is quite in the front then uh, the in comparison to the subwoofer or we have to put the delays in the subwoofer to match our line areas. So let's start with the basic thing. So here we select which series we are working on here. So this particular software only gives you the DVA series and the VO because those are the main line array DB technology manufacturers and those are the linear segment they have rest most of the things are point source and columnar systems so here we are going with the dva t series the t8 t12 t4 there are multiple ranges of product so here we are then in the typology we have to show if we are flying the system or we are ground stacking it over the subwoofers or over a pole or anything. So we go for the flown over here. Then the height of the array frame. So a typical Indian scenario, let's take in the trusses around 24 feet, let's take around 22 feet or let's have 20 feet for the array frame height. Then starting of the coverage, it will, so uh, this is a 2D simulation software again, like the ease focus. So in this page, it shows you the front view, the left right subwoofer, uh, the left right line arrays and the subwoofer configuration they are aiming. And the next page, it shows you the side view. So here, let us uh, say from where our line arrays are deployed, and the first uh, audience area maybe it starts from 12 feet and maybe it everything the cover we have to cover around a 200 feet fin. next comes the gap gap is basically the gap between the line areas so for example if we have a 40 feet width stage let us have it like the gap between them is 50 feet so 5 feet from the stage on left 5 feet from the stage on right so 50 feet to be our line source the gap between left and right of the line arrays typically says as lr sub but we can change it in the subwoofer prediction so this also let us keep it as 50 so or even if you are concerned about like um, uh, sometimes if we, uh, we are also stacking the subwoofer from left to right and the maximum maybe we do not want the subwoofers to go beyond our line areas so we can also make it like around 30 feet stage settings the height of the stage for example 5 feet let's take the width around 40 the depth around 30 feet framework setting here we can layer it as a truss or a truss bar whatever we are using there so if we update so this looks like the truss layer uh, like a scaffolding if we are using for that particular venue or we can use it as a truss bar two kinds of frame again here so the DRK10 that takes around up to 250 kilos and beyond that we have the DRK20 so normally whenever we know the rental company is going to expand in future they have plans 
so initially we just tell them to get the drk20 and one beautiful thing about the whole db range the whole dvat range of products and all the db technology line array products is that you do not have to buy array frames for every different product like for the dvat for the t4 ta t12 everything the array frame will be same and whenever you hook up a t8 with a t12 for example you do not need any extra accessories so the width of the, all the cabinets are exactly same the main difference that is the width and depth is same the main difference is in the height of the boxes that differs depending on the driver sizes again so everything hooks up flawlessly with any other top so the t8 hooks up with the t12 the t4 also hooks up with the t12 t4 hooks up with the t8 and you do not need any extra link in bar or you do not need any extra array frame to hook them up let us use the drk2 20 so we have two left and right so here you can see the array frames are here now let us have around 8 per side of t12 so that makes us 16 so it will we have to give it the exact cabinet it will divide by itself so 16 so 8 per side let us also have the t8 below 4 per side or uh, 3 per side let's make it 6 Here you can see the T12, FIR, T8, these are the separate cabinets and that comes, it's almost the same but with, uh, this comes with a FIR filter so we just have to update, update the cabinets with the uh, newest firmware so that it's also enabled with the FIR filters. Here we are using the normal cabinets and one more option on the subwoofer I don't know why it's not coming over here it's because of the screen resolution something is going wrong okay anyway let's have the uh, S1518 subwoofers let, let us work with that for the time being So uh, it asks you, do you want to fly your subwoofer or do you want to, uh, you want it on uh, as a ground stack. So let us just look into the ground stack because I just want to show how the subwoofer configurations and everything work and uh, if we have a flying subwoofer and all that anyway you won't be able to trace it in the software here. So let us have 16 or ground stack subwoofers so by default it comes in a LCR pattern as you can see let us increase the whole left right subwoofer area okay so after we have done this this is a basic layout that we are uh, going to use for this particular uh, setup so it shows uh, so after you're done with this, just giving all the details of the height 
of your array, the truss height and everything. It starts as soon as you have given all the data here, it automatically starts all the predictions. As you can see in the LA predict, the line array predict, the prediction is already done here. So here we can see couple of windows. So here we have the option of using a spiral. So if we use a spiral, so what happens is like we are giving a, uh, having a very good tonal balance throughout the fanu. But we compromise a bit with the SPL. If we go with the J, the SPL is much more better. But now we are compromising a bit with the whole tonality, the homogeneity of the tonal, uh, tonality of the speakers from front to back. Or we can use a J spiral. So let's go with the spiral here. And the audience is seated or standing depending. So that's basically the height you can see the dotted line over here. That is where it's showing when you give it seated. So it goes down and standing it's a bit up. So now we can add a couple of balconies if we have. <coughs> so here you can see the height of the balcony and everything. So here you can say it starts from 50 as it says. Maybe we make it around like uh, 145. So like this, we can update the venue and we can see the height here or maybe the, it's around like, uh, let us make it 12 and let us make this 8. So probably this is what, and you can see like, as you are going on doing your work, the whole prediction is constantly working. It's constantly keeps working on it so you are getting an optimum result you do not have to go and change the line array settings and all this thing every time they have basically made a good benchmark for anyone to start their work and maybe the second balcony is around Maybe this is what we are dealing in that particular scenario. For now, let us just remove all the balconies and just simply work on a normal straight venue that we typically get, like a park or something. So here you can see that already it has done all the prediction of the pinpoint configurations that you need for the boxes. Here you can see all the boxes, the angles between them. Those are the pinpoint configurations that you have to do. The preset loading that you have to uh, set. So the, behind the T12 and the T8 and the T4, all this, uh, you have eight presets that you can turn a knob and you can select a preset accordingly. Or all the DB product, the T range and everything are enabled with the RDNet. So you can directly loop in, loop out all the CAT6 cables throughout the cabinets get them on a RDNet controller 2 or 8 and you can take everything online and once it's online you can just do everything with a click of a mouse it becomes very easy it becomes very convenient for all of us to work on a laptop because as a system engineer or anyone enthusiastic 
enthusiastic about uh, the computer and working uh, or prediction software and all. we would like that but for a general purpose people sometimes they do not want uh, um, uh, there are many rental companies who have to get the work done the show ends by night and the next day by morning five or six they are going to the next venue and they do not have so much time to predict every time so for that convenience they have also given the preset numbering so they have not given multiple switches over there like to control the low frequencies to uh, control the higher frequencies to make it far or near sometimes in line areas we see when we go behind there are like five to six switches and there are instructions like if this happens put this switch on if this happens put this switch on and sometimes when some of the labor force in India when they are not very literate so it becomes very hard for us to make them understand ki if this happens do this this happens they won't understand so it becomes very easy for a rental owner to just tell them ki go hook up the system in this configuration and put all the cabinets in six or five say or four so at least the work is getting done and they are still saving some time so here let us make the liner a bit like so now here we can see is like it's showing all the prediction as soon as we click the SPL it will start the mapping process and it will show how the line array is actually behaving in that particular scenario and below you can see the SVL that it's showing so yes it's a bit exaggerated and that goes to any kind of software it's a bit exaggerated they do it but just assume it like around 12 dB lesser on the ground what you are expecting so here for example it shows you almost like 128 or something in front so assume it like it will be not around 128 but it will be around you can definitely get around 115 116 over here goes down to around 115 or 112 in the back it shows so assume it like it will go down to around 100 like here we can see here what it's predicting so 120 121 that's a bit exaggerated so just assume minus 12 db for everything so whatever you are getting here just assume it as minus 12 db you'll be getting over there Then here it's showing all my pin configuration as I already told in the preset configuration and the configuration check it's okay green mechanical safety is okay delay check so it says delays to the subs so you have to delay the subwoofer so at least you have a platform and you know what you're working on if we go to the next sub predict we can change the from where the liners are uh, firing from so 5 feet so I have just made them 5 feet in front of the stage and similarly goes for my line areas let's make it also 5 feet yeah and the center okay so as the line area is uh, here so it's almost clear over here what we are watching uh, for the line areas with that regarding the SPL we can choose the frequency we are looking at so here it's particularly showing the 1 kilohertz uh, the mapping that shows here and you can also make it into 4000 or any frequency that you want similarly you can also mark the frequencies here and look into the 
whole range of frequency how it's actually working over there in the venue and at least you have a clear set of mind how you have to work along or what are the key features or what are the frequencies that you are you have to cut down in the venue when physically you are present here let's go to the sub predict now so here this is the top layout this is also the top layout but with the dimensions this is primarily showing you the position of the line array and the subwoofers so the first thing is let's see the LR subwoofer configuration the so as soon as we click in LR in the if you go back to the composer you can see how they are stacked so basically what's happening here is like it's telling you this is the way you can stack the subwoofer so you get a good result out of it We can go to the sub predict again. And put it as center. So what's happening here is like taking the center axis, everything is stacked together. And in the composer again, we can see all the 16 subs are stacked together. It's a straight line configuration without any gap. Or we can go to LCR kind of a prediction and in the composer again we can see this is how DB technology the engineers of DB technology would want you to place your subwoofers so that you get the maximum response out of it a good response out of it Let us remove this subs uh, for the time being. <coughs> Let us go with 1600 other subs. Now, as we have changed the subwoofer, you can see these are the cardioid subwoofers that they have. One more option I have now opened is the end fire. And again, you can go to the composer and it will show what they mean. So in from the front, it looks like this eight in front and eight in back. And here from the top view, you can see it. And the grill to grill difference should be 4.92. For this kind of a thing, we will definitely need the subwoofer, the overall subwoofers to come a bit from here. We can see it's going under the stage. Let us go to the LR again. Let's make it. Let's go to the end fire. So as soon as you deploy the end fire and it gives you all the measurements that is needed that will give you the optimum uh, response of the subwoofer you can see it uh, says around 4.92 feet from grill to grill front to back. Here it shows you the presets and uh, configuration that you intend to have. So this 75 you can see the crossover we can also change that depending on what we want. And it shows you all the delays. Some screen issue, so I'm not getting the exact 
the whole screen over here. Uh, whatever it is, and uh, it shares the uh, gap between them, and also it gives you the whole delays. So here you can see, as the numbering says, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So those are the rear subwoofers and the front subwoofer. So we have to deploy a five millisecond delay in the front subwoofers so that we get the optimum response so normally when i do a uh, n fire setup if i have the ordinate it's all easy we can just loop in loop out all the ethernet cable from the first subwoofer goes to the eight comes from here connects to this and again goes loop in loop out because ordinate also shows you couple of ids so according to that this one two three four however it's shown here in the composer so i can just make it like like here we can say 10 9 12 11 so same goes for the one two three four here so one is in the top two is in the down so we can accordingly go and hook up our ethernet cable like the first one is going to the upper box then second then going to the upper box the third box going down and from the eight if we come to the upper box here 16 then goes to the 15 so this exact numbers will be shown in our rdnet itself so there is a device number over there so it says says you like 1.1.1 or 1.1.2 or 1.2.3 like that so the first one is uh, like the controller number 1.1 then the next second number is the channel number and the third one the third number digit is the cabinet number so if we just hook up all this in the third channel of the ordinate control 8 maybe then it will all show you from the and uh, that's the first controller for example then it will show you as 1.3.1 the upper box then the ground stack box will be 1.3.2 this will come as 1.3.3 1.3.4 and so on so you can directly deploy the you can just select all the subwoofers on the ordinate and deploy this five milliseconds making a separate master for them if sometimes you are not working over the ordinate and you have a console so what i normally do is like i assign i make two matrices front sub and the rear sub and because the all the mix engineers uh, they prefer the subs to be on aux I assign that particular aux to both of this matrix. So the input of the matrix becomes that particular aux that is my subwoofer. <coughs> and the output, the physical output is going from the matrix out. So the mix engineer has the is working in the same pattern as he works in his day-to-day -day life. That's like having the aux auxiliaries, uh, subs on auxiliary sending uh, whatever the signal he want to send to the sub it's all flawless and same just rather than patching the physical output out of that particular aux we are just getting the physical output from the matrices and this aux is input of this both matrix and then if this is my first matrix of my subwoofer so i'll just put the five millisecond delay over here if I do not have any access to the RDNet or any kind of a DSV. So with LR, C and LCR, you also have an option of rotating the subwoofers. So rotating the subwoofers primarily means when we go in the front view, So those are all lying down now it's in a horizontal way and if we rotate it again it becomes in the vertical way stacked one over each so now what we can do is like we can predict the so here in the subwoofer also we can see all the frequency that we intend for that particular subwoofer supercardioid cardioid or hypercardioid what is the configuration that we want to achieve over here and the polar pattern that it will show so as soon as we click the SPL mapping over here
this whole prediction takes a bit of time i'm so sorry for the whole delay in that okay so this is my lr setting the left and right prediction and as you can see there is a full power relay over here here and this and there is again cancellations over this areas that's why left right configuration of subwoofer is considered as a sin but still depending on the scenario sometimes we have to do that corporate should spe especially <coughs> when the manager comes and tells us that there is a staircase over here in the center or whatever it is and then we can go with the center and again we can hit the SPL mapping and then you will see so with the center it means everything is stacked together sticking with each other So with the, everything, all the subwoofers stacked together, we can see we are getting a much beautiful response over here. We can, so it's now almost at the edge of the stage, as you can see, we can change that over here. And again, hit the SPL mapping. So it will give you an optimum response. So this is the, one of the most acceptable and Tonality wise, it gives a much beautiful response That's, uh, whenever you stack all the subwoofers sticking together. Personally, one of my favorite because the whole tonality and the whole dispersion of subwoofer is very even throughout the venue. We can arc it a bit so all the sides of the subwoofers, this from the sides to the center, we start deploying the delays. So here we can also see again it says delay to the subs and there is a 0.5 millisecond delay it shows over here. What is this? So basically what happens in regards of any kind of subwoofer system and the processing and subwoofer or line area or anything there is a processing delay involved. Sometimes we keep putting a delay or uh, whatever it is on the line array system but if we don't consider a processing delay that that particular system is taking then we might go wrong or we might be in the range of where my subwoofer is aligned with the subwoofer aligned with the line arrays but sometimes it might not work exactly how we want the whole phase aligning process that also takes consideration of the whole delays uh, the processing delays as well as the also sometimes it also depends on the cables and the length of the cables we are running from the console uh, the length of the cables we are running from our RTM and everything so it just specifies that the processing delay incurred in uh, this kind of a thing by the DSP internal DSP of the subwoofers is 0 0.5 so any delay we deploy on the subwoofers will definitely go beyond 0 0.5 so it may be one, one millisecond, two millisecond. So it gives us a platform to work on. So as we go with the left, right, center, this is one, again, a very good subwoofer configuration that I personally like. Given the situation sometimes we have, is the staircase are on the left and right, these areas then we can definitely deploy a subwoofer system kind of like this in the composer we can see the center subs are laid down and these are one on top of each other <coughs> so definitely it doesn't come in the side also we can put our center fields also over on these subs so it doesn't come in the line of sight and we can predict the SPL again
so this is what we are getting with the left right center subwoofer configuration then we can go with the end fire Now here you can say because our whole subwoofer thing have come in from delay to L it means a delay to the line arrays that it's saying so you need to delay both the line arrays x millisecond for phase alignment using RDNet or an external processor. Let us make it zero. So accordingly it will tell you what you're looking at and what is that you have to do so let us again make it three maybe <coughs> and it have deployed it have told you this is the millisecond in the front so that it aligns with the back ones and then the overall you make you can in Arduino you can make multiple masters so what i'll do is like i'll make one master of this subs one master of this and the overall master and to align the whole subwoofer system with the line arrays i'll put in the whole master and in the front master i'll put the five millisecond to align it with my rear subs provided if i do not have this uh, option and i am working on uh, uh, on a board without any RDNet. So in the matrices, I will put my five millisecond to align this with here. And the overall, I'll put in my auxiliary itself. The delay so that it aligns with my line areas. So let us see how the end fire works. And you can see like absolutely beautiful curve over here, beautiful backward reaction and the whole venue is covered. And a very even tonality, even dispersion of the subwoofer. And then after you're done with all the predictions and everything is clear in your mind like okay this is what I'm going to do tomorrow you can obviously save the whole file and then you have the option of print it so the event name place date who designed the whole project points to be noted so that you know what is going to be there and preview it and just you can print it and give it to your boys or mail it to your boys so that they can get the work started till the time you come and align your system. <coughs> so the DB technology composer is quite a very simple software. What happens is like uh, what I have seen in, in this software is like the industry, the system engineers of DB technology who have years of experience have really made our life easy and they have set some benchmark so that if nothing works in the venue just follow the software 
and you can get your work done very smoothly because it's guiding you you can almost see it's guiding you in all the steps so this is the layout that you'll be receiving after you print out the whole thing and all the points and everything will come down so it makes our life very easy when we use all these prediction softwares and all this thing i always i'll tell everyone before going to a show at least just just spend like 10 15 minutes it will really make your whole work much more smoother and what the company have always predicted there are there are many there are so many beautiful brands in this world and i i guess there are many very very few people who have actually experienced the true tonality of a sound system because every time they go in the venue and they work on assumptions and that is something that really keeps us holding ourselves back and not working to the optimum limit that we are capable of working if we use all these softwares just taking 10 minutes time and as much as you start working on these softwares you become quite fast and then this 10 minutes will just go down to two or three minutes to just predict the software and get the work done it just takes three four minutes so i it's a very humble request to everyone please try to download the softwares of the whatever brand you are using devote some time on that and try to at least for the first couple of months when you are getting a new system or anything just go with the company standard what they want you to do what they have suggested because after manufacturing any kind of any kind of brand manufacturing their cabinets they are, they definitely have a philosophy behind it how and they definitely know much better than us how that particular system will work better than what our assumptions will work so just telling you all that and i hope this session was also quite helpful with you so yes this software helps you a lot with the subwoofer prediction also the subwoofer is the game for everyone nowadays and i hope this software will help you a lot and the with the ease that db technology works where all the software all the cabinets uh, even if you want to drive the system manually or through rdnet there is immense possibility of doing anything with this kind of uh, products and cabinets and particularly when the cabinets are all network controlled you are like as a rental company everyone wants to stay in business for at least eight to ten years with the same set of cabinets <coughs> that they have invested on at least till the time they don't reach their point where they have earned the whole lot of money they have uh, they have invested on their sound system so whenever a system is network controlled it always gives you the possibility of updating that uh, particular system you just have to keep be careful of not overdriving your drivers and not blowing it up and till the time till the time you are not overdriving your system and everything network control devices and network control control cabinets are the present generation and it's also the future that will be working any every year new updates come where the people are working constantly on their presets and everything and the system sounds phenomenal and that goes and uh, in db technology we also have all the cabinets and everything so the whole uh, the dsp are all uh, 24 bit 96 kilohertz so if your console is capable of running at 96 kilohertz like digico and some other consoles and your sound system is actually working at 48 kilohertz it doesn't make any sense of running a show in 96 kilohertz so if your sound system is also capable of taking that particular sample rate to run the show and your console is also capable of doing you'll definitely hear something phenomenal so thank you so much for attending this 
and any kind of help you need in regards to the line array placement of subwoofers or any kind of thing that I can be helpful to you kindly drop me a message or comment thank you so much